You're listening to DraftKings Network. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. Some exciting news for everybody. The Sueys are starting next week. Those are uh, wow. the award shows we live. Our Oscars. Yeah, the ping. Uh, we relive all the great moments of the past year, and we mix them down in montages, make a bunch of categories for them. It's a really fun part, and it always happens right before football season. So stay tuned for that. I, I want to relive uh, an anniversary that many of you may not be aware of. Today is the anniversary of a special pop culture moment that resonates to this day. It's become a meme. Do you know what I'm talking about, Greg? A meme, El Hassan. No, I don't. <laughs> Three years ago, Tom Brenneman was forced to make an on-air apology, and Nick Cassianos wasn't having any of it. <laughs> Castellanos to lead things off. Jim Day's going to be taking us the rest of the way through this game as Holland takes over on the mound. Um, I made a comment earlier tonight that uh, I guess uh, went out over the year that I am deeply ashamed of. Um, if I have hurt anyone out there, I can't tell you how much I say from the bottom of my heart, I'm so very, very sorry. I pride myself and think of myself as a, a man of faith, as there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, <laughs> it will be a home run. <laughs> And so that'll make it a 4 nothing <laughs> ball game. I don't know if I'm going to be putting on this headset again. I don't know if it's going to be for the Reds. I don't know if it's going to be for my bosses at Fox. I want to apologize for the people who signed my paycheck. For the Reds, for Fox Sports Ohio, for the people I work with, for anybody that I've offended here tonight. I can't begin to tell you how deeply sorry I am. That is not who I am uh, and never has been. And I'd like to think maybe I could have some people that um, they could back that up. I am very, very sorry, and I beg for your forgiveness. Jim Dale, take you the rest of the way home. How many years is this anniversary? Three years. Three oh. years. Anybody off the top of their head remember exactly what he said, what he was apologizing for? Homophobia, yes. right? Wasn't yeah. That? This is one of those. So the, the reason I was asking, because there's times where I start to wonder, it's like, hey, what, what was that again? Mm -hmm. and, which, and so you just hear the apology. I kind of forget this one. This one sticks right in there, because mm -hmm. if you remember, I think they were doing a promo about San Francisco, something yeah. happening in San Francisco. And he said the can I say it? I don't think I can say it. Should I say it? I don't, don't say it. Probably, the probably F don't word say capital of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And it's just like, man, oh, that wow. that one was just I need the way the tone that he said it. It was just like not mm. his first time. No, definitely not his first time. And then the fact that it uh, the home run happens immediately after he it mentions he's a man of faith as if he prayed for the home run. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, he hasn't. He, has he gotten a, a, another shot? Was that the end? He was a. Big deal. He was a lead baseball voice on 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 Fox. He he was part of their NFL coverage with Joe Buck departing. He might have been in that mix if uh, this never happened to him. I pride myself and think of myself as a a man of faith. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. <laughs> Amen. When you hear the baseball and the crack of the bat, it's just a perfect sound. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, since then, it says, since leaving the Reds, is according to his Wikipedia, he has served as a commenter for the Roberto Clemente League mm. and for Chatterbox Sports. So, not sure. It did end his career. I'm, Essentially. I, mean, I, I would have assumed, like, live golf or, or big three, but, <laughs> okay, so he's... <laughs> He was done. That did him in. And does when that, he said, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to put on these headsets again, and there was something to that. Does that make this the most famous home run call ever? Because I was thinking about this the other day, and if the video team has that other home run call, it'd be great. I was this is the about shot the heard around the world. That, like, yeah, because, I mean, this is a way to tell that baseball is dying. Like, the home run call was mm -hmm. kind of like a broadcaster's dream, right? It was a situation that you practice for and stuff. And now, I can't remember a home run call. I can't remember anything that they really say on Sports Center for home runs, like, like the guys used to say back in the day, you know, all the meats and cheeses and everything else. Bartender, Jack! That's, the, that's the, <laughs> one of the last few that I can remember. And uh, there was this, and this is how I know it was dying, because there was this terrible, terrible home run call from 2019 that if you guys had heard it, you would have, it would have been a fixture, I believe, as part of the show, if Dan were here. But 
I don't know if we have that sound. Do we have that sound? We probably don't have that sound. What yet. sound are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's old. It's, oh, the, the, the St. Louis Cardinals home Cardinals, run call? It's Cardinals, Rockies, I, I home run game. You. I can get uh, that to you. Home run call. And it is, if I were to close my eyes and imagine two people graduating from the Stugatz School of Broadcasting and were then going to an audition, let's say, in a minor league game and calling a home run call, this, that sound, this sound that they eventually will play for you, and I'm not doing a good enough job of this, but uh, sounds like two people who failed out okay. of, of Stu Gatt's I just emailed, uh, Chris, I just emailed you the sound. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Do you think if the, we had so much going on in our lives at the time that the Brenneman thing happened, that uh, we were not going to make him the topic du jour. Right. And we were just going to laugh at the funny of it. And there's plenty to actually laugh at, despite the 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 horrid origin uh, of where the apologies stem from. He would become a uh, a political weapon today. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. He, he, he would absolutely. And we're talking about this was only three years ago. But if he got fired for this, he would already get work at another right wing. Yes. Well, make the argument. Right. What would it sound like for him? Because obviously we know the argument against him. But what's it sound like for him? Well, he's, I, made, I made a mistake. Well, that's that's also part of it too. Like he didn't he didn't drum it up. Like you've seen all the the support that Sage Steele has gotten in this promo tour that she's had <laughs> since she's left ESPN and she's finding the allies. Tom Brenneman, I guess to his credit, hasn't tried to play victim here. He's been laying low. I mean, he did in the apology try to get people to vouch for his character, which is the funniest part at the end of like, I think there are people who could speak on my behalf. Please, for the love of God, help me. (laughs) Please speak. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, as far as apologies go, he didn't really make excuses outside of, believe me, that's that's not in my heart. That's not who I am. And yeah, we can absolutely read into it. I've never been that guy other than 10 minutes ago. I've never been that guy other than sounding like I've been that guy before. Right. But uh, he hasn't gone out. I'm not trying to give him any credit. It's just curious. Usually when someone find, finds themselves in this embroiled canceling controversy, they they go on the offensive. And he hasn't done it yet. And when you don't go on the offensive, you basically push away anybody that's willing to make you the face of a cause. What's the offensive look like there, though? It's like, I, I, I apologized, I'm good? Or yeah. does he say, no, well, like, nobody he, likes gay people? Well, is Freedom he, of speech. It, right. it, this has actually been, it, it feels like we're going backwards now with uh, with relations and, and how gays are accepted, right? There's been a real amplified offensive, especially down here in the state of Florida lately, where even three years ago, that would be uh, that would be too hot to actually pick up and, and, and make a political platform out of. Now he'd find allies because three years later, it is essentially part of the identity of a, a, a sector of that base. Yeah. I mean, look, I think we're, we're going backwards in a lot of ways. I think when you talk about like the pride flags and everything else and everybody's sort of standing up for for uh, not wearing them all of a sudden and just having reasons to not do so. I just think, you know, you talk about like uh, the way a lot of these organizations and stuff do things. It's, you know, maybe sometimes they're not brought this this, you know, patch or whatever, this whole concept until, you know, when it's too close and they don't really have time to discuss it or, or to have their feelings discussed. And yes, there are programs and, and, and stuff within these, uh, these organizations and these, uh, these teams, but how much do we really know these players and these people are really listening or really being affected by it, or if it's just something they have to do just to do, and they're going to hold on to their own belief. So yeah, we're going backwards in a way. I do think that, you know, the conversation just becomes so convoluted. Something like Brenneman did, I think is is pre- pretty clearly something that you don't survive from because it had that that twinge of hatred mm-hmm. in it. Like it's just the tone that he said it in, and then to immediately say that's not me is a complete nonsense. Like you could just say something, hey, I got to work on me, but you can't say that's not me. But that and and the conversation that we're having about whether or not he would get another opportunity now shows just how much we've devolved in the yeah. last three years since this conversation of. I completely agree with you, Mike. Like if, if he had said the exact same thing with that twinge of hate, if anything, that would make it more of a reason for one of these right wing places that are currently using this, this, this 
otherizing of another community once again because we couldn't get people to grasp onto the otherizing of the previous communities that we've been otherizing for the last decade. Here's another one. Let's throw hate at them. And he would have been a perfect representation of, oh, cool, calm, classy broadcaster yeah. made a mistake. I he would have been I, a martyr, a victim of cancel culture. 100%. And he probably would have gotten a job somewhere. It's, it's funny. Like, I just, I just wanted to laugh at the Nick Cassianos thing. And in reliving it three years ago, this is just three years ago. I, instead of being filled with nostalgia, I'm like, wow, the world has really changed in the last three years. We live in a post Ron DeSantis culture war with with Disney, and now people are wearing that particular cause on the sleeve in ways that they weren't doing just three years ago. Can we laugh at a terrible home run call from four years ago then? Those balls are a little slick. Ravello uh -oh. knocked me down. Hello, goodbye. There you go. Knock me down there you go bye bye and then take a trot <laughs> that my friend is the way you do it are those the lyrics to a beatles song nothing about that wait was that's he brushed back run call. was he brushed back see he's getting context here Hello. you can figure it out <laughs> was he brushed back earlier in the at bat he was brushed back earlier right, that, that makes bat. sense that's a good call that's not a bad call that's it's a good call a, okay Hello. so this clip on its own, by the way, first of all, you start off with there balls are really slick. Yeah, right? those balls were slick, yeah. <laughs> and then hit me with the home run call again. Ravello uh -oh. knocked me down. Hello, goodbye. There you go. Just stop there. Don't say it again. No, I like going Don't say it again. Let and me then say he that, says it again. Let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar. Knock me down. Hello, goodbye. There you go. Knock me down. And then take a trot. That's a good call. That's not a bad call. And if, then his buddy says, that's how it's done. That, my friend, is the way you do it. That is not how you do it, sir. That is, is he not the hit how you the call. He means getting the hit <laughs> after being brushed He does mean that, this but is a you're hometown. listening to the call. On, this is a hometown broadcast. If your there guy you just go. got brushed back, please describe the play at all. Just please. a little bit. And what? Balls and then, Where's the ball? And then word choice. And then take a trot. And I immediately remembered that I had to go to the ring. And then take a trot. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friend, is how Hello. you do it. Hello! I didn't take a shot! I immediately did think of Greg Cody, though. Like, Hello. that would absolutely be Greg's uh, home run. That'd be call. my Hello! After every <laughs> home run. Hello. That'd be my guy. This guy's stealing my material. Yeah, Greg, we did we we did get sidetracked. I saw that you had actually something on the LGBTQ topic. No, uh, just this is <laughs> you know, an improved Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Hey, it's Roy from the Dan Lebatard Show with Stugatz. U.S. Cellular knows how important your kids' relationship with technology is, and they've made it their mission to help them establish good digital habits early on. That's why they've partnered with Screen Sanity, a nonprofit dedicated to helping kids navigate the digital landscape. And for a smarter start to the school year, U.S. Cellular is offering a free basic phone on new eligible lines, providing an alternative to a smartphone for children. Start smarter with U.S. Cellular. Visit uscellular.com slash built for us to find out more. Terms apply. Don Lebatard. Greg Cody, your thoughts? Stugatz. Greg? Okay, very good. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm here. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz. We're talking college football. Thank God. It's been long enough. We're here with Was that a Greg Cody Smetana. breath? Right there? Oh, <laughs> Greg, Greg Cody. Yeah, yeah, my dad just breathed. Right into the mic, Did like you? crazy. I was doing an intro. I know. I, didn't I, thought I was really, doing good too. You were doing great. I didn't realize realize you were that. crushing it, Lucy. Great. Now right. Keep going. Very line. well. Doing very well. I was introducing Jess and Spencer Hi. Hall from Shutdown Hello. Forecast. Jess, I have an opening question for you. Ooh, um, okay. Hit me. When, when do you get back? <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, Lucy. I'm sorry that you're there all alone without me. Is everything okay? They, they're oh. talking about a lot of things I don't want to talk about. Yeah. We're talking what about a lot of wieners. We're talking about wieners a lot, and we will get off that subject, I promise. Jess, um, stay on it. you're in Ireland. Um, are you working or are you on vacation? A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. I'm actually here with a company called On Location that are... Uh, showing me the sights of Ireland this week. And the game is on Saturday night, so I'm going to be 
back in Dublin on Thursday. Right now I'm on the west coast of Ireland. Uh, so far, so good, Izzy. It is not 100 degrees here. Uh, I know Lucy was just talking about how hot it's been in Miami lately, but I felt a cool breeze on my face for the first time in months, and it was amazing. Mm, you chose Ireland over Israel. I'm not very happy about it, though. Spencer, where are you? I am currently in Atlanta, Georgia, where it is a balmy 900,000 degrees. I'm loving it. It's great. That's college football weather, baby. Follow-up question, are you circumcised? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. And your life's your life's worse for knowing that, isn't it? Yeah. Aren't you glad you asked? Yeah. We're pulling right. away here. Yeah, write oh, that down actually, there. Yeah. Oh. You see what I did there? Yeah, don't do that. We really pulled away. Yeah. Oh man. Um, all right. So where do we want to start? Do you want to start with Michigan and Jim Harbaugh and uh, all of a sudden a uh, self imposed suspension being three games as opposed to the four that was originally suggested? Yeah, what was going on there, Spencer? Uh what was going on here is this. Don't talk to the NCAA. Don't. Don't cooperate. Don't talk. Don't acknowledge them. This is one of the biggest programs in the nation. And it's absolutely humiliating that they even cooperated with this crap because it is about cheeseburgers. That's literally what this is about. You'll see this. You'll know it's about cheeseburgers and about Jim Harbaugh allegedly using a company credit card to purchase said cheeseburgers when they say this is not about the cheeseburgers. Lies. Imagine being an adult. Imagine being an adult. And working for the NCAA, and somebody says, it's extremely important that you got to go find out that Jim Harbaugh used this credit card to go buy some cheeseburgers for a couple of recruits and not dying of shame. That's what this is about. So now they're caught in this back and forth where they have to make the NCAA look like they're legitimate and they have to own up in order to go ahead and put off any possible sort of punishment that they signed up for by cooperating in the first place. You know who you won't see doing this? You won't see Ohio State doing this. You won't catch USC doing this. You sure as hell won't catch the U doing this, especially because they have problems of their own right now. Didn't Ohio State do this with tattoos, though? Foolishly, yes. And they lost a coach because of it. But here's the trick at Ohio State. They don't need it. They don't need a coach to be good. They're going to be 10 wins, 9 wins, no matter who's coaching that thing. That's not the case in Michigan, and we found that out. So in order to placate everybody and keep Harbaugh on board and keep him from interviewing for um, what NFL jobs are going to be open, just pick one, one of them. He'll interview for it. It won't go well, and then he will go ahead and come back to Michigan without his tail between his legs because he has no shame about these things. We should mention Spencer Hall, host Meadowlark, shut down full cast, and I think we already mentioned that Jess was in Ireland where Notre Dame kicks off the season against Navy. Jess, what are you most excited about? Well, to be honest, I usually am very excited for week zero, which is what we call the weekend before all of the college football games start, where there used to be like one or two teams would play here and there. And now it seems like every year more and more teams are playing in week zero. Um, and that's the weekend that the uh, Aer Lingus Classic is, which is here in Ireland, which is basically like a bowl game that's part of the season where two teams come to Ireland and play. Um, it's not even an exhibition. It's an actual season game hmm. kind of before the season starts. But then Notre Dame is is playing in it this year. And I kind of realized I like week zero, but I don't like when my team plays in week zero. It's kind of like a week zero for thee, but not for me situation, because I would have loved the extra week of practice for Sam Hartman, who is the transfer from Wake Forest that's starting at Notre Dame this season. Um, and instead, you get a big old road trip across the pond to Ireland. So um, I am excited for football to start, but I'm also already kind of hitting hitting my nervous energy situation like a little bit earlier than usual right now so yeah some of my some of my worst habits are coming back izzy because it's not week zero for you it's week one for you everybody who's playing it's it week is. one it's week zero for everybody else yeah and, exactly and I, i'm excited for it she but, hates navy i don't like navy i do think scheduling wise playing navy the first week is always the best situation for any team because you get a whole off season and all of camp to practice defending against the triple option, which is something that Notre Dame has to see every year. And when you see it later in the season, it's a lot more difficult than when you actually get time for it at the beginning of the season and has probably historically voted better for the Irish. They're 10 of 11 uh, of the last games against Navy they've won. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, I'm very biased here, but uh, this year will be the same. I've got yeah, hope, you, hope you pull that one out. Hope you pull it out again. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, out. look. You should be it, nervous. It is. It was nerve wracking last year. Notre Dame almost gave up a massive lead to Navy in the second half. But so, um, that's why these games are so stressful for me, Spencer, because it is Notre Dame. Sometimes they let you down spectacularly. So this is again, by the way, you I, I want to just be clear. You went overseas 
yes. to go beat up on overmatched competition with superior firepower on your side. You've just took the Navy's job. That's what you did. <laughs> Spencer, I have to I, I have to give you credit because you clearly don't care what your background is when you do these things. And you have <laughs> I want you to see such a that, mess that's back there. That, you have that's NCAA that right, right there. That's the video game queued up in the background. Okay. I paused it to talk to you guys. And is that a cat inside of some sort of jar that says ham? Yeah, that's a cat inside a wrapped inside a gigantic blanket of ham. Okay. And you put that, that there. That's ham cat by local purpose. artist R. Land. Okay. <laughs> And then on the right side of you, just random boxes and shit. We're moving in. Yeah, okay. this is a uh, we've you been moving like in for over a over a year ago. <laughs> that is correct. As over a year ago, Spencer is my co-host on DNF. So seeing the, trying to do like little Easter eggs with whatever is in the background of his Zoom is is also one of my favorite games. Is that see. a Coca Cola and a Coke Zero? Yeah. Uh, no, let's see. We have uh, that is a bubble water. There's like a, a carbonated a bubble a bubbly. Hmm. And uh, a Coke Zero, along with a Duke's Mayo Bowl helmet hmm. <laughs> and uh, a Dale Earnhardt cooler. So I have a Dale Earnhardt mini cooler back there as well. You're just missing the the Czech soda there for for like s Southern bingo. Uh, I think Lucy's going to offer to <laughs> buy a few of those items from you. Uh, <laughs> Spencer, it, it seemed as though a couple of years ago, I know Miami and Florida played for uh, for a week zero matchup that did big time ratings, and it felt like wow, the the mm -hmm. NCAA and its big media partners found a new golden goose where they can extract yet more money from. And since then, the matchups have been pretty uninspiring. No offense, Jess, but why isn't there the the one big marquee power program against other big marquee power program week zero thing become a thing? Probably because coaches, I think, are most concerned and administrators are most concerned about the existing, uh, you know, workload of games for players. They would rather backload it. They want to go ahead and make sure that if you're in the playoffs, you haven't been playing for, um, you know, X number of weeks before you go ahead and get into that. Additionally, and this doesn't sound like a lot, but for a coach, it would be a lot if you're trying to plan out the season. That's an additional like week that you don't have to prepare Right. And, and almost every single team will go ahead and take that. If you see these week zero games, um, Notre Dame aside, you're not going to and USC aside. USC, by the way, is playing in week zero. They're playing San Jose State. That's who they're playing. USC did not uh, schedule a Titan for the week zero matchup. They don't do that because programs that usually scheduled in week zero, it's an attention grabber. And it's for programs that need the attention. And it's for programs that don't really have some of the logistical challenges that say a behemoth like Alabama might. So that's why you haven't seen the week zero thing. It, we get very messed up on scheduling and how people schedule things, and we don't really understand the incentives. Remember, Nick Saban hates playing in the playoff because it interferes with recruiting. <laughs> That's it. So when you see him sitting there holding a trophy, he's just waiting until he can get back on his phone. Spencer, I love to get angry about lists. And with the preseason pullout, ooh, I'm fuming. I'm ready for it. When you look at the top... You sound, sound pissed. Ooh, I'm okay. fuming. I'm, Iowa was ranked, so I'm not that I'm angry. Down. I'm happy to be at 25. But Spencer, when you look at that list, is there anyone you see in the top 10, top 15 that you're like, yeah, they're they're unranked by week five? <laughs> no, no one who I say is unranked. By the way, shouts out to everyone for ranking Iowa, because that's yes. right. We they're gonna win. There. They're gonna win eight games. You're gonna hate all of them. Oh, but America, gonna you're gonna take this, this medicine because Kirk Ferentz is never dying. Never. never. It's going to live forever. <laughs> if I look at anyone here who I go, man, they're gonna fall out of the top ten. Um, I don't because everybody looks really solid, like down to like ten. If you had one program in the top twenty-five, who I go. We might be a little speculative there in terms of entertaining uh, them being real good. I'm I never trust North Carolina because North Carolina has no defense whatsoever. And anytime you put Ole Miss in the top 25, I'm going to go ahead and red flag it just because that's Ole Miss. Good things don't happen to them two years in a row historically. Like their success chart looks like an EKG. It's just up and down, up and down constantly. Jess, I have a ACC Coastal size hole in my heart. Who replaces mm -hmm. the ACC Coastal in just being absolutely bonkers and uh, it gets a special uh, special classification of no one actually wants to win this. Oh, that is such a great question. I mean, honestly, honorary ACC Coastal was the Big Ten West for a while, but now their divisions are also gone. I think that's something to certainly keep an eye on, Mike. 
Um, I also want to just answer Lucy's question to Spencer uh, in my own shady way, which is not enough people are talking about the fact that Tulane beat USC at the end of the season last year in their bowl game and the Cotton Bowl. And USC retained their defensive coordinator who did not do a great job last year. So when we're talking about teams with no defense like North Carolina, I think people are really, really high on South Carolina because of Caleb, Caleb Williams, as they should be. But even Southern Cal, I should say, not South Carolina, you. even <laughs> I know. Right. It's funny because I went to two schools that both hate the USC school. So it's it's very easy to remember that. But even with Caleb Williams last year, they did not win the, the Pac-12. This is the last year of the Pac-12. We will see who wins it for the final time. Um, but I, I don't know how I feel about them being in the top 10 because they had some troubles last year. Jess, 15 seconds. How is McDonald's in Ireland? <laughs> they have a curry dipping sauce for the fries and the nuggets. Sweet curry. Oh, my God. And they have snack wraps. They have snack wraps here. I miss the snack wraps so much. I give it a 10 out of 10. McDonald's. Come to Ireland. Go to McDonald's. Curry from Ireland. That's a shocker. Jess, did you know that Greg Cody was also here? Greg, I miss you. Hi, Jess. How are you doing? I'm looking at the clock <laughs> as I'm saying. This is new and unimproved Dan Levitar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Stugats here for my friends over at Simply Safe. The average break in lasts eight to 10 minutes, so fast response is crucial. That's why Simply Safe Home Security launches breakthrough technology 24 7 live guard protection to help stop crime in real time. Now, Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter intruders in your home through the new Smart Alarm wireless indoor camera. What amazing peace of mind. I have been a customer of Simply Safe for years now, and I am telling you, their home alarm systems are the best in the world. Simply Safe's advanced motion detection and vision AI can sense the difference between potential intruders and pets to reduce false alarms. And right now, the Dan Lebitard Show with Stu Gatz, our listeners get a special 20% off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. This special offer is for a limited time, so visit simplysafe.com slash DLB. That's simplysafe.com slash DLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. The Jedi fell a long time ago. Perhaps it is time to begin again. The highly anticipated Star Wars series, Ahsoka, arrives Tuesday on Disney Plus. Something dark is coming. One must destroy in order to create. <laughs> galaxy is not safe don't miss the two episode premiere we have to prepare for the worst hunt them down let's get going <laughs> ahsoka two episode premiere streaming tuesday only on disney plus don lebatard we like to call this one a chorus of owen wilson yeah. ready <clears throat> stugats wow 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 wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is the don lebatard show with the stugats <laughs> We are just a couple of days away from getting confirmation after he turns himself in if Donald Trump is indeed the same height and weight as Derrick Henry. Oh, God, yes. I can't <laughs> wait for this. And I'm going to say it's not. This was something that was claimed? Yeah, well, yeah. Because if you Google uh -huh. what Donald Trump's weight is, I think they, <laughs> they, they graciously give him 243. Over. And See, the, running backs can be any size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donald Trump should have decided. Well, he was actually a world-class running back, Chris, and then he decided, I'm just going to become... Yeah, Google has him at 6'3", 243. Yeah, that, no way. Funny. I mean, who hasn't put on a couple of pounds in the last couple of years, but... So he could have been a running back, but then saw how it was going and decided to be president. President. So Chris was right. Yes, Chris was, mm. Chris was right. But uh, the line is actually, it started at 263, and there is some heavy steam on that. That that line ballooned up to over. 277. Over. You're taking the over on I 277? I would, yeah, I, I would yes. take the over. Way over. How, how, it could start with a three. 277. You think he's 300 it, it pounds? It could start with a three. Uh, that's. Is he even 6'3"? Has that been determined? He's I do well, believe he's the a height. big man. I do believe the height. I think, no, I think we're in the looking at at least... 20 pounds over the 243. But is he circumcised? But that's where we start. <laughs> he's, he's six foot three, but his ass starts at around five foot five. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Why do they take your height and weight in these situations? In case you go on the run. He's called on the lamb yeah. in this case, I think. If you go on the run, then they they have an accurate way to, to describe you. 
yeah. just in case they needed to find Donald Trump on the run. Right, because yeah. he's otherwise unidentifiable. Nobody knows no, who he, he is a world-class like, athlete who could have been running back, so he might be able to get away. Yeah, he could juke. Yeah. He, I mean, what happens if he's lined up next to Derrick Henry? Then, that's then who's true, who? That's true. I mean, if he's spending any time in prison, he probably should bulk up and like really look I'm, like Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. I, I got to tell you, I'm good. I don't need a Donald Trump mugshot. I, I don't. Mm. I don't need it. And I know exactly what's going to happen when that mugshot oh, yeah. comes out. Yep. I don't want to be reminded of it. I don't want it to be on banners. I don't want it to be on shirts. I'm so Both good legs. with skipping the, the mugshot portion of this. How many tattoos? On Donald Trump? Tattoos of, ooh, that's also a good question. Yeah. How many tattoos on Donald <laughs> Trump? Because they take inventory of that too, visible markings. I was going to ask just how Wait, many well, tattoos of question. his mugshot. Chris asked a question. We may find out on Thursday. <laughs> I just don't want it. I find the whole thing exhausting. I'm happy. I'm happy that he's not par- participating in the uh, in the Republican debates too, because then we just get in an echo chamber and just be the worst the worst parts of us. But it's not as if this is even happening because you look at poll numbers and the only person struggling is, you know, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He's a world class loser, that Ron DeSantis. I don't know how Donald Trump's lead. I'm so lead. glad I'm just here to nod along with Mike and not actually say Don- what he's saying. Donald Trump's lead Preach. increases with every indictment. Like, how it's amazing. How bad of a candidate must you be? There was a CBS poll that came out recently, and I'll, I'll have to look for the specific numbers later in the segment, but I believe that. Uh, those polled who said they are supporting Donald Trump were asked if his quote unquote legal battles are part of the reason they're supporting him. And 73% of the people said yes. No, I'll go back and confirm. We're, we're going to double down, triple down. None of this will come back. The only thing, see? the only thing that will actually stop him from running is, is him being in prison. And even then I'm not, I'm not so sure. Did so you see, I mean, because this is what makes him so popular. It's like, no matter what you throw at him, no matter what he does, he can never look bad. But did you see DeSantis? Uh, I was talking about Trump in terms of never looking bad. But did you see DeSantis get asked a question recently about uh, just his numbers or whatever it is? And he goes, not here. (laughs) And immediately went to like start to cry like that one meme. It's weird how how shame even sticks to DeSantis and no one can play the game that, that Donald Trump plays in which everything that would be con- uh, conceivably a disaster for any other candidate is, is just a win for him. It's the same type of party and base that traffics on freedom, and yet they don't mind if they totally undercut the democratic process. It's a, a special time in history, and I really do hope someone does something about it because he's made every indication that he's about to change America and the powers uh, of the presidency if he gets it back to where you just – you're just straight up a fat. You're under a fascist, and they may never actually relinquish power. If I'm Biden, though, I go with the the, the Trump strategy of I'm I'm just not going to talk. Is, is Biden going to be helped by doing these Dude, debates? I, like you remember how bad those debates? That's were what I'm saying. Four like years he, ago, he should just stick with the poll. He's polling fine. Just don't speak. Go no with debates. the Trump method. I'm with you. No, when when Trump becomes a candidate, as it seems like we're headed, and it's them to again. And when we were complaining about how old. And embarrassing those debates were four years ago. We don't need to see it again. No, no one's mind has been changed. In fact, in the last right. four years, we're just running it back. It's become so easy to be the candidate against Donald Trump that all Joe has to do is not fall down. Just, just stand, yeah, stay straight alive. up, no stay bike lean rides. against something. No, no bike rides. No more bike rides. No more <clears throat> bike rides. Stay out of the sun, hermetically sealed, because he is. <laughs> He is not Trump, and that's all we need. That's that's his, what it boils down to. You can make it a one. You can make the ballot just two check marks. Right. <laughs> Our friend check Brad boxes. Williams, Trump, comedian not Brad Trump. Williams, uh, did a a Biden joke in the the Miami, Miami comedy improv, and man, people were laughing way too aggressively, <laughs> way too aggressively. Even Brad was just like, "Whoa!" I was. I mean, I knew <laughs> Miami's different, but good lord. Yeah. And it was, you know, a little bit of an uncomfortable moment. Yeah, Doral is powered right through. Doral is even more different Mm -hmm. but uh i do want to maybe for you switch topics Uh, or are we going to go to greg's nudies honky tonk t-shirt is that what we're switching topics to well it has been distracting to me i've been looking at it all day and he he does have the word nudie on it what is is, this is it says it's it claims to be world famous so i imagine this is a very real place right it's a honky tonk now but it began as what's a honky tonk i know but i don't think jeremy knows what a honky tonk is just like a a 
a bar, the you know, country bar. Okay. With sawdust on the floor and you know, hmm. jukebox and, and all that stuff. There's, but no, think, so, there's no sawdust. I don't think bar. sawdust is a requirement. Yeah, it's no, a, no, it's no, a live it's music a bar. Right, right, exactly. Um, but Nudie uh, is the guy who fits and Upset. clothes all of the old time country stars. Wow, two upsets in one sentence. Yeah. Nudie is a guy who clothes people. Right, clothes that's people. a great name. Right. The reason exactly. that this shirt is interesting is because if you look, I got this shirt for my dad. I was in Nashville last weekend. Yeah, he loves a black shirt. Thank yeah. you. So I bought it for him. I, ha I handed it to him, and he takes a pair of scissors because it was it was balled up in a little like you know tube like thing. So the, he cuts the scissors, and there's also you know these stickers that are on all these shirts. That's the size. Yeah. yeah. XL, XL large. Yeah. How do you usually yeah. remove those, oh, Izzy? No. Uh, the sticker? Yeah. With my hands? Oh, you just rip it off. I rip it off. You yeah. don't try to cut the through if the it, middle of the sticker? It depends. What? It depends on what kind of shirt. Because I've done it where I've ripped the tag off and I've put a hole in the shirt. It, do, so it doesn't it, depend, really. Like, with that sticker, the, the size sticker always gets just teared off. We're talking off. sticker, not Oh, the tag. sticker, not the tag. Yeah, the oh, because I tear off all the tags right, in the back the of my Right, the tag shirt. is, yeah. like, you pull those off. I'm with you on that. But the, these are just the sticker that's the size. You just pull it off. No, right? it depends. Exactly. And my dad decided to take scissors yeah. to that. And if you look below the little silver, like at the, the see the, the end goes around like oh, yeah, in a there's big a hole loop. in that thing. My dad cut a hole in the shirt that I bought him. And I, I think there's like a black piece of tape over yeah. it or something. I was going to say, did Electrical you try to tape. like gorilla glue that thing together? <laughs> I did. How do we know that hole wasn't already there? <laughs> well, well, I, I know. Because my dad said oh. to me, I just accidentally cut the shirt. Yeah. yeah. Why, but why electrical, pull it? electrical tape is magic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same color as the shirt. It's just <laughs> not really. Yeah. But why do you have to be you? Hmm. Who else is going to be me? Exactly right. Why Remember to take that it? off before you put it in the washer. For somebody yeah, who that's a good point. We bleed so why easily, and you're playing with scissors for no reason. Stay with Mike. Yeah. Well, well, he wasn't well, wearing the shirt. Why didn't you pull, you pull the on. tag? The the sticker. I off. couldn't find. It was balled up. I couldn't find the end. I just took the what I consider to be a faster. Couldn't way find to the do end. It. You just pull from the middle, bub. No, it's balled no. up. You're no, not you paying attention. That. They're no. not, Greg. They but don't once you unball, like it was so simple, and my dad knew. He was ashamed of it. He knew. He saw that he did it and tried to hide it from me. He was just like, "Oh, great shirt, thanks." And I'm like, "Wait, did you just? Why are you awkwardly now putting it away?" And then embarrassed. And then I fling it open. You see a big big hole in the middle. Well, who yeah. gives someone as a gift a job? Why are you making him do all the work? If it's a gift for him, cut off all the tags, take off all the stickers. His job is to just wear the shirt and enjoy That's it. A very anything, good point. You. Billy is spot on Thank with you. that analysis. Well, you, did you just give it to him in a ball like that? With yes, he did. It? it was tied no up card? in a little no piece card. of like, no string. Card. It was Not tied wrapped. up in the, like, scissors were, like, he, he needed scissors because there was, like, it was tied up in a string, but okay. you just cut that string. So he needed scissors. He cut it, he cut the string, and then he's like, oh, now I'll cut this sticker off. The scissors were in my hand. Mm -hmm. how I'm still, how did you present this to him? Did you give it to him like a hot dog wrapped in, like, yeah. aluminum foil yes, just did. like that? Hey, brought That's brought you something form. from Nashville. Mm -hmm. There no. you go. I don't like, uh, uh, I don't think your mom would have been nope. okay with that. I don't like that your son is using this platform to embarrass you. And, yeah. 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 You, you'd be I didn't tell him to wear the shirt today. You'd be happy to know something happened before the show today that might be a, a, a source of embarrassment for him. Oh, I would love to know. Yeah, that. Billy, do you remember what happened before the show when you guys, uh, before the, the meeting between uh, the Fuentes brothers? Yeah, so before the show today, we somehow started talking about wrestling and how wrestling, you know, growing up in the 90s was very dangerous for children yeah, because everyone everyone growing up yeah. was like, oh, you know what, let me try all these wrestling moves because wrestling really had like a moment in the in the like late right. 1990s, sure. right? Yeah. So any kid that's, you know, like in the range of 7 to 12 or so, whatever, was 20. like really into it. Yeah, and they would go and they'd try to do wrestling moves on their friends, their siblings, their, you know, cousins, whatever, right? So we were talking, me and Mike Fuentes, about different things and I used to do this move and my cousin would do this move and we broke this and we broke that. And he was saying how, oh my, what's that, Chris? This is not that, like, this is no, not no, a good no, payoff. Stop being so, this, this stop being offensive. It. How about so, on you? I mean, let the man tell a story. Yeah. Stop talking while other people are talking. Let, let's hear the story. So then, you know, we're talking about different moves. And then Mike Fuentes was saying like, oh, you know, growing up, me and Gino, it's lucky that we didn't get seriously hurt because we used to do these wrestling moves in the room. And there was just basically carpet on top of concrete. And Chris says, wow, you guys have known each other that long? And Mike Fuentes says... Me and Gino are brothers. <laughs> I just had a moment. Look, it's early you guys in the go morning. That far back, huh? I mean, it, there's a lot of 
There's a lot of people here who just go back with each other. Like every like everybody here is they're brothers. Friends. They know no, they're brothers. brothers. It's not just that. All my life, Lewis yeah. and Tony and Kieran, like everyone knows each other. Forever no, you didn't know they were here. brothers. But they're brothers. I'm, I it's knew known. that. I, yes, I knew they were. Do you brothers. think Gino Fuentes and they have Mike? The same Fuentes last name. Was, if yeah. you want to know what really happened, it there, similar. I had a they brief, sound alike dumb also. moment where I just thought for a second that Gino was Danny GQ. I thought no. he was GQ for a second, so I'm like, wait, you guys go back to? Oh, it's Gino, like Danny Gino Q. It was early in the morning. You know how you can tell the payoff is worth it is because of. How defensive! You're so defensive. defensive. Well, I'm laughing stock. I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I made a mistake. We came in. Way, speaking of wrestling, okay, Roy, Jesus, oh, it's, it's, top rope loud as a mother. A, that was a little loud, wasn't it? I mean, is he trying right to take a nap, oh, man? Wow, no, seriously. On, I will eventually be trying to take a nap while we listen to this. Laughing stock. How's that? Much better. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Good.